Hi, welcome back. Hi, I'm Chanel. And I'm Chanel. And this is Chanel and Janelle, Janelle where, where book talk meets culture. culture. Yes, and today we have another great book, of course. So, the name of our book is No Small Potatoes. Yes. So, this book follows the story of Genius Groves. I hope I got his name right, but Genius Groves. And he is, or he was, a slave that became an entrepreneur, entrepreneur and probably the richest black man um, in America up until the 20th century. I believe so. That's what? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. So here's what he, he um, so the book basically tells you how he journeyed through that. How he, be, he was born a slave mm -hmm. um, and around I think his teenage years he um, got his freedom and then from there he just went yeah, he just migrated. So he had yeah. a dream. Yeah. So I feel I, what I liked about the book is that it, I like, first of all, I love the title, No Small Potatoes. I'm like, what? But then overall, it's like he always wanted more and not just more money, but more in terms of like more out of life. So mm -hmm. he started, he wanted to be a farmer. So not, he just didn't become just a farmer and he's just, oh, I'm going to just, this is going to be the end. He became a farmer and then also created like an empire. Exactly. So also what I liked, what I liked about his story is similar to what you're saying. He did, he was, he had, um, he was very like motivated and had a drive when he got his first job. I think he was getting 40 cents, 40 cents. Yeah. And he, it and was, it was a day a, right? yeah, or something like that. Yeah. And it was very little, but he was like, Hey, it's better than begging. And he said, I'm going to work hard enough that this person's going to increase my pay. And every year he was like, I'm working hard. I'm doing up and beyond. Right. Right. So he was like going up and beyond, up and beyond, and slowly but surely he kept getting increased, increase, and increase mm -hmm. in wages. And then until he started, he told his, um, his employer, wives. yeah, well, yeah. yeah, I want a plot of that land. Yeah. I'm going to rent it from you. And he started growing potatoes on that land. And then, until, but he also had a dream of having his own and yes. owning his own. So he had he had to say he saved twenty two hundred dollars, which at the time was a lot of money, mm -hmm. considering the fact that if you were only making like what 40 90 cents a day or so like he saved all that money to buy his own land mm -hmm. and that was just the beginning of what he thought he yeah. was going to do yeah so this book also what i um, i liked about it the title no small potatoes mm -hmm. it it made me stop and think like what did they mean because he was a potato farmer and he was later known to be known as the potato king, king, king. yes um because he grew um the most potatoes but what does it mean when they say no small potatoes or when i hear the title no small potatoes to me i don't know if you want to share or do you have any ideas but for me no small potatoes is like sometimes you can look at something and like this is all i have but never look at what you 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 get like no potato like mm -hmm. his first set of earnings as too small right there's so, nothing too small because the the potatoes is what end up um like helping him become an entrepreneur um i don't know if what i liked about this book is i don't know if a lot of people know about him or if it's just me but like this man was loaded even in today's time, right? Because he would have been like he would have been like a millionaire, trillionaire at this point if it was if you were to look at the amount of money he made at the time. But I feel what I think you the whole takeaway of the story is that he started small. He started off as a slave. He started small, just growing potatoes on a farm, and ended up literally growing an empire that literally fed America. Exactly. He had the biggest company. At the time, the biggest farm at the time, feeding all, um, setting, distributing potatoes, obviously other crops. But he also wanted to leave. He didn't just have a dream for himself, but he left a legacy for his family. He built a mansion. He went from living in a hut. Yes. To building a mansion mm -hmm. with like, what, 21 rooms. 22 rooms. Yeah. Yeah. And had a, a dance pool. He, he built a golf course. Yeah. Um, a he grocery store, store. A church. Legacy. Yeah, he just legacy. created legacy. And I think that was one of his, uh, that was part of his dream. Like, it wasn't just for him, but it was for everyone else. Mm -hmm. And talking about, like, even they had a railroad come to his location just so that they could, you know, get trans transport the potatoes across the country. Yeah. So this started off as just an idea of, hey, I want, you know, I wanted to have my own farm one day, start off with 80, 80 lake. 88 80 acres, 80 acres of land, and then growing it into this big empire that mm -hmm. employed people, mm -hmm. employed farmers, um, 
gave food to those who were in need. Just yeah. really, so he just wasn't only thinking that. about himself. His his legacy, and I think too, th there's so many lessons that can be taught in this book, like perseverance and hard working and hard working and determination. Um, mm -hmm. And it's good and a good example of how you can teach kids these lessons. Not saying not to limit yourself based on where you start off, mm -hmm. right? Because he could have said, "I'm just a slave." I was just, just I was just a slave. I'm just inspired by how much money he saved. Like him and his wife saved a lot, lot of money. <laughs> yeah. They lived with what was necessary. Yeah. And I th it made me think about too like sometimes we're always like get 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 want 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 but we're not looking like okay, how many things in my life do I really not need? Yeah. So that you can make a sacrifice to achieve the dream that you want, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. where where am I going to cuz I'm thinking like if this guy is making that type of money like okay, let's say he got an increase to dollar fifty and was able to save that much money to buy. He end up owning over um, five hundred acres of land, over right, and built houses, grocery stores, um, golf course. Had most crops, with railroads, and companies made contracts mm -hmm. with him to export his potatoes all over America. Like that is like thinking beyond just yourself. Mm -hmm. That's like thinking like generationalized legacy. So I'm like. It's very inspirational. So let's see. Let's get to the ace of this book. Mm -hmm. All right. So remind. Let's remind them. Yes. Ace. Is it accessible to the reader? Is it um, something that you can uh, read relatively easily? Um, and is it appropriate, appropriate for, for the, the age, age group, group that is intended to and intended? Um, C. C. Is it culturally relevant? Does it represent the culture in which it's displaying, or relevant to the times and cultures in which we live? Mm -hmm. And E, is it engaging, entertaining, um, pleasant to read for the person, whoever is reading it? Enjoyable. Enjoyable. So with A, it's, to me, <laughs> I felt like it wasn't, it is accessible. I mean, it's not like uh, an encyclopedia. When it comes to like saying, okay, is this a nonfiction text? It's accessible and it's not really like too heavy. I like but, how the author wrote it. I think like some a lot of times when you write and read nonfiction, you see like they say who this person was, this that other. I felt like throughout it, she was asking questions. It was kind of mm. like breaking it down, so it was kind of thought provoking while you're doing. Almost like it was written from the perspective like if it was a relative, like a relative wrote it telling their great grandfather's story to a group of kids. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like it was it was being written like from some sort of like encyclopedia type of what is it? encyclopedia yeah <laughs> what that is anymore it's oh google. Google. google it yeah wikipedia wikipedia right, right. yeah so um yeah so, so i guess I, it is it, accessible in that sense yes, yeah yes cultural relevance i think it's relevant to almost anyone who's trying to say hey i want to be I, I want an example of a person who's hardworking, determined mm -hmm. um Motivation, motivational, inspiring, mm -hmm. because um, all of that is very relevant mm -hmm. to everyday life. Yeah, they don't speak a lot culturally from the time period that he had. He may have faced like discrimination and mm -hmm. stuff. They don't not. It doesn't speak about that in the book at all. It doesn't really address it. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't take away from the story. Yeah, I would say it doesn't really yeah. take away from the story. Because while I read this book, I wondered like when he bought the land from his own. Like, was there anyone? I mean, they said in the book that he had a lot of. Um, Haters. Pushback, yep, he had haters from other people, and the illustration showed black characters Yeah, that gave a lot of pushback and stuff, which speaks to something else of how sometimes we're not supportive of each other um, when, we, when people have dreams. Um, but I didn't speak to um, the fact of, like, was there a lot of discrimination? Were the people that weren't willing to do business with him? Or did money talk? And they were just like, this guy has money, and... He's making it, so we're going, exactly. you know. So, so. Um, it doesn't speak to that. So, and within the time, you would, you would think I would, culturally, that, in the time period, you would that, think that would be a heavy issue. issue. But I think that the focus of the book was more geared towards, towards yeah. his success Sex. as an entrepreneur and as a farmer. Yep. And, and then, is it engaging? Mm -hmm. I thought it was engaging mm -hmm. only for the fact that the author did kind of break it down and put like little questions to like if you were reading it to kids like what did you think is that like a lot of money can you imagine what do you think he would do next almost like it was yeah. the person was actively talking to the reader yeah so, so there were questions in between i did mm -hmm. like that so what do you think he's going to do like when he had to pay off he had to i can't remember the sum of money that he 1400 dollars, and he said he was going to pay back that money in a, a year, year. I was like, first of all, that made me think like, how many of us can't even save $1,400 in a, some people in a year? 
like he paid off like his debt like you know i felt I mean? like it was more than 14 but okay let's just say we it, it was a it was a long it was a, a lot of a lot of money and he had to pay back in a year people were like kind of like oh that's not gonna happen and he said but what do you think is he just worked harder mm -hmm. so he just worked harder and lived on less in order to yeah. achieve that goal yeah so, but it was engaging the way it was written i yes. think overall yeah it, it was engaging so i would definitely say long story short no small potatoes is, is aced. aced. Till next time, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye.